Good morning. Welcome to the Florida United Methodist Church. It's Sunday, August the 15th, 2021. School is back in session. We're praying for our, our children and praying for our teachers, our bus drivers, our coaches, everybody that's involved in the school. We appreciate them so much and we've learned to appreciate them so much. Also praying for all our homeschoolers and uh, all the parents who are going that extra mile during this uh, COVID season, uh, season of stress in our nation, and we are praying for you. We know that, uh, that our children are our most prized possession, and uh, we just love our little kids. Friends, I'm glad you're with us today. We're going to read a passage of Scripture. I have referenced this passage from, from Luke 13. Uh, many times, I would say a half a dozen or so times in maybe the last year or so. But this morning I decided I would just read it. You've heard me mention it, but today I'll read it. And you'll be so glad you tuned in this morning. We're going to worship the Lord and we're going to read His Word. So thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you so much. Don't forget, coming up in about a week, less than a week, Fun in Flora, Saturday, next Saturday, August the 21st, I believe, from about 10 in the morning to about 2 in the afternoon, more or less. We'll have barbecue, we'll have music, we'll have a live auction, a silent auction, we'll have ice cream, and we'll have lots and lots and lots of uh, fun and games for the children. And so come, come on that Saturday, hang out with us. It will be the hottest day of the year, and you'll be so glad that you came. We've done this continually for about, uh, for about 50 years or, or so, and uh, except for last year. I don't think we did it last year because of the coronavirus, but uh, we're back at it this year, and so we hope that you will come. It's an outdoor festival if you're uh, concerned about that kind of thing, and so... It's, uh, it's just fun, and we want you to come and be blessed. Friends, thank you so much for joining us. I've been missing seeing you so, so badly. We have a lovely, just the, the best online congregation you could imagine, and about 300 or so watches every, every week, and we have, uh, on a good Sunday in church, we have maybe 150 people, so we never... And we didn't quite come back from the COVID like we wanted to, but, uh, but uh, we have a, a good early morning service at Bentonia at, at 9, and then we have service here at 11. We're so glad you're joining us on YouTube television or Facebook or however you are plugged in this morning. We're so glad to see you. God is good, and he is blessing us, and I tell you, the best is yet to come. Jesus said, fear not, and the Bible says over and over and over again, fear not, fear not, fear not. So don't be afraid. Just rise up, people of God, and let's, uh, let's carpe diem, let's seize the day. Friends, let's worship the Lord. Don't turn this thing off. I'll be right back. Uh, praise man, take it away. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame done's all it's stealing. Are you desperate for some healing? Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way.
much about me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Oh, he makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. He ain't no sinner that he can say. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good At the end of the service, I'd like you to share this video with, with somebody who needs to hear what I'm teaching today. It's going to be a different approach to a subject that we teach on. It's just we're going to just probe down a little bit deeper, maybe, than, than we typically do. And uh, we have the perfect passage for this. So join me in Luke chapter 13. If you know somebody, you have somebody in your life, Maybe they're on the prayer list, or maybe they're your neighbor. Maybe it's, it's a, a, a relative, a son or a daughter, a brother or a sister uh, that needs to hear a message on healing. Then you're going to want to share this message with them. And so we really want to get this word out today. Friends, uh, we, don't, uh, we don't preach and teach from the word to just check it off that list, you know, well, I went to church today, check, I uh, wrote a sermon, check, you know, I, I taught my class, check, it is, it's not perfunctory, uh, it, is, uh, it is sacramental, it is, it is healing, it's a means of grace, and so I hope that you will tune in this morning, that all sermons can't be winners, and, and I don't know if this one is, but I, I've been on the laying egg. But I know that this passage is going to speak to you. Even if I botch it in the message, this passage is going to speak to you. So join me in Luke chapter 13, and we'll start with verse 10. I left my glasses at home, and so thank God I have my big print Bible. Now, if I could just get somebody on the front row to hold the Bible, it would be far enough that I could read. So it's on a particular Sabbath, on Saturday, that's the... Jewish Sabbath, right? The old, the old Testament, the old covenant Sabbath. Still Sabbath, it's still on Saturday. Sundown on Saturday, to, uh, Friday to sundown on Saturday. Shabbat Shalom, uh, the Sabbath rest, the Sabbath peace. So it's on church day. Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years, we don't know how old she was, but I, I, I visualize her being 80 or something, you know, really up there in age. But she was crippled like an arthritic condition in her back that, that where she was bent double. And you've known people like this over the years that who really suffered. And, and so she could not straighten up at all. Verse 12 says, when Jesus saw her, he called her forward and he said to her, woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he laid his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and she began to praise God. Indignant, isn't it an odd, you know, we just read she, she, she was healed, she stood up. And she praised God. And the very next word in this passage is indignant. <laughs> indignant. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. The synagogue ruler, that's the head pastor, uh, said to the people, there are six days for work. So come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. He's not, 
He's not rebuking Jesus. He's rebuking her. But he's passive aggressively rebuking Jesus. Have you ever been in a situation where somebody said something and they're not talking to you, but they say it loud and demeaning? So they're really talking to you, but that's so passive aggressive. You, you know what I mean by passive aggressive? It's, it's a dog that while he's licking your face is wetting your pants. <laughs> you know, that's that that way of doing things, you know, that is just so manipulative. It's, it's actually a, a form of witchcraft. I'll have to preach on that another day. And the Lord answered him. Now, he rebuked the woman, but the Lord answered him. Jesus said, I'll handle this. And Jesus answered, you hypocrites. Uh, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey? from the stall and lead them out to get a drink of water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what had her in bondage, from what bound her? And when he had said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing in their midst. You know, when we talk about healing and we talk about this kind of, this kind of thing in the church, it really upsets people. It upset people then, and it upsets people now. And uh, people just don't want to hear it. I think maybe because we've all had loved ones that we've lost, and, and we've all had unanswered prayer. Now, now if you want to tell me that you've never had an unanswered prayer I, I just feel like that's that's fine and dandy you can say that to me and I'll accept your testimony I would also offer this and in, in reply you don't pray for much <laughs> you don't pray for much you don't ever ask God for much because those of us who dream big and who think big and who want to do great things for the Lord we know what it's like to pray and receive, and we know what it's like to pray and not receive. And so there is the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. We all experience that. But a prayer for healing is, is complicated, and, and sometimes it's just complicated by matters that are just, we don't really know what it is exactly we're dealing with. So somebody gets sick and, you see Jesus healing people all over the place, but, but he doesn't do it the same two times in a row very, very much, that, or that the gospel, sometimes he spits, and he spit in a person's mouth one time, one time he spit in their eyes, he, he would make mud and put mud in their eyes and tell them to go wash it out, and lots of things. Sometimes Jesus would pray a two-word prayer, you know, be healed. And the disciples had all kinds of crazy ways that they prayed. Paul would pray over his aprons or he would pray over handkerchiefs and he would send them out to, to pray for people. Peter was so anointed at one point of his life that, that if people couldn't get to him, they would get to his shadow. And friends, a shadow healing is really spectacular. I think a shadow healing is so spectacular that it exceeded anything that we actually saw Jesus do. And that sort of fulfills Jesus' words in John where he said the same miracles that I do and even greater ones you're going to do because you go in my name. And I've heard a lot of preachers explain that away. But that's what preachers do with scriptures. They find uncomfortable. They explain them away. And so we see lots of reasons that people get sick. And uh, it's right now we're dealing with germs, right? I mean, our whole world has been frozen because of a germ, a virus. Or sometimes it's a virus, sometimes it's a bacteria. Or sometimes maybe they have a nutrition problem. Or sometimes it's a lifestyle issue. Or, or sometimes it's a free radical. That's how they, uh, you know, uh, study cancer. These free radicals break away. It's, those are cells in rebellion. And they break away and and form cancer cells, and that is just a, a horrific thing. And then sometimes it's injury, tra traumas, traumeo, the, the Bible calls it uh, in, in Greek. It's 
trauma. A lot of people live through traumas. And, uh, you know, there was, uh, uh, Paul was preaching one time. There was a guy in the upper level of this house he was preaching, and he was in a window way up high. can't remember that guy's name, Eutychus or something like that. And, and he fell asleep in the window in the middle of Paul's sermon because Paul was long-winded. And the guy fell asleep and fell out of the window down to the pavement to his death. And the Bible says Paul went out there, raised this guy from the dead, healed the injuries that he had, and then went back inside and finished his sermon. I tell you, friends, if somebody drops dead in my service, we're pretty much calling that the benediction. <laughs> you know, we're going to, you know. We're going to pray for him and go back in there. And I bet he didn't have trouble giving his altar call. But if you'll look at this passage of Scripture, you'll notice something here that you don't see very many places in Scripture. The Bible says here, and it's specific, it mentions it twice, that this, that this woman had a spirit of an infirmity. That is, her sickness was caused by a devil. She wasn't demon-possessed, but she, had a, she was under a demonic attack. A demon had attached itself to her, to her body, and was really causing her agony. A spirit of infirmity, that's a, that's a sickness that's caused by demonic oppression. And so this is really, really, really different than a sickness caused by another way or an injury, you know, or bacterial kind of a thing somebody was born blind or they're born crippled this this is a different this is a the, you know a horse of a different color that and Jesus goes in there and he sees this woman he's he's in that synagogue and he's sitting in the seat of Moses that's the chair like I'm sitting in 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 the center of the synagogue Jesus sat and everybody was standing and Jesus saw this woman come in he had a word of knowledge. He called her to the front, and he healed her. And Jesus, Jesus, we're going to unpack this whole thing in just a moment. But the, the, what I want you to see right off the bat is that Jesus appealed to the compassion of God, and he appealed to the justice of God. I think that's a good way of praying, don't you? He, what Jesus said is, is this is not right. Jesus said this. Listen, do you hear what he's saying? He's expressing his sense of, of justice. It is not right that this woman should be bound by a spirit for 18 years. This is not right. This is not just, he said. Boy, I, I, I tell you, that's, that's how we pray when we pray for little ones children that we pray for we pray for a good many children some in this very congregation and we come to the Lord and we say Lord this is not right God responds to that to that bold proclamation there was a church uh, out in California and uh, Redding California it's north is Mount Shasta just about an hour from the Oregon border north of San Francisco north of Sacramento and about, I guess it was a year or so ago, their minister of music uh, had a two-year-old child that died. And they, you know, called the ambulance and the, the, the child uh, was DOA. They put the child on life support. They came in and told the parents it would be, you know, it's a hopeless situation. And the child was dead. And so... We'll just unplug the child and send the child, call the funeral home. And, but the parents said, no, we don't want to do that because we, we have a church that believes in prayer. And so they asked the hospital to leave the child on life support till they could call their pastor and, and who, that I know and, and call the elders of the church to pray. And, and in my world, that's perfectly reasonable. And so word got out in the community, we're praying for this child who has died in his own life support, and the parents wanted to give it, give us two or three days, or it was, 
give us till the weekend or something to make a decision. And uh, let, let us pray. Give us a chance to pray. And so the, the church began to pray, and, and uh, they prayed and fasted for a couple of days, and there was no change in the child, so they disconnected the child, and, and they went about celebrating the child's life and had the funeral and all of that. But word got it, swept the nation. And I had uh, my Facebook and my uh, YouTube and, and Christian media, Christianity Today, these magazines that cover Christian events, covered this story. And the preachers just mocked this church. They laughed and they ridiculed the pastor of this church. They ridiculed the parents of this child. And they called the church a cult. And they said things like this. They said that uh, this church doesn't believe in the sovereignty of God. When they were praying for God to raise that child from the dead, they were saying that God made a mistake and God wasn't sovereign, God wasn't perfect, and you can't pray for it. You, get, you just have to accept what the good Lord puts on you. And they, and they just began to berate this, this pastor and this entire church and this entire movement. And I found that to be horrific. It was cruel. And they... And they sort of held their fire till the child died. And then, and then they begin to celebrate the death of a child because their theology was that God doesn't do miracles. And they didn't want God to raise that child up off that sick bed because they had so much invested in their miracles. And by the way, what does the sovereignty of God have to do with this anyway? This woman has been sick for 18 years by the devil. 18 years, Jesus said, by the devil. You see, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Satan is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Pharisees are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the same this same pharisaical spirit is in the church world today. I tell you, I find it appalling that people can't, they're so, they're, they are so in, invested in their theology that, that God doesn't move, that God doesn't do miracles. They say if God were to raise the little girl from the dead, then God made a mistake when he killed her in the first place. <laughs> Friends, that is asinine because, because Jesus raised people from the dead. He, he wasn't against the sovereignty of God. The apostles raised people from the dead. We got 2,000 years of church history of people being raised from the dead. I know one person that I prayed for that came back from the dead in a hospital on life support, and they went in to disconnect him, and he was alive after we prayed for him. After he was pronounced dead, for four days we prayed for him. And, uh, and he's alive today. He lives in West Point, Mississippi. And uh, I can give you his name. You can go ask him. And, and you know what, friends? The Old Testament is full of miracles where, where the prophets like Elijah and Elisha raised people from the dead. That is not an assault on the sovereignty of God. But yet preachers in their little myopic worlds they live in, they have so much invested in a powerless God. You see that woman who came in the church that day who was sick for 18 years? Her pastor could have prayed for her. But they had a guest preacher that day, and he prayed for her. Her pastor never did. He didn't even try. He didn't even try. In fact, he was offended. He was, it was such, it was so fake. You shouldn't have done this. He didn't want Jesus to heal her on any day. That whole Sabbath thing that they, he put on Jesus was such nonsense. I tell you, friends, we got people who call themselves Christians who don't want to see you healed, that don't want to see you well. 
So there's a, there's a lot going on in this passage. I love an Old Testament saint that experiences a New Testament miracle. This, this lady came in to the synagogue that day. She was keeping the Sabbath. She's an Old Testament saint, right? She's following the Old Testament law. And so Jesus, he called them out, not based, not based on the cross. Jesus hadn't been to the cross yet. Not based on the stripes that Jesus took on his back for her healing. Jesus hadn't taken the stripes yet. Did you hear what Jesus said? Did you, did you catch that? Jesus said, is it not right that this daughter of Abraham, what's Jesus doing there? He is citing the terms of the old covenant. Jesus healed her as part of the old covenant. We're in the new covenant. The old covenant is, is a lesser covenant. The new covenant is a greater covenant. We have better promises. We have more power. We don't have all the religion that goes with the old covenant. Jesus fulfilled all of that. He, Jesus paid all of that. But Jesus said, I'm going to heal this woman, but not based on the cross, but just based on the justice of God, it is not right that this young woman or this old lady, however old she was, we don't know, she was at least 18 because she had suffered for 18 years. How about that? Now, we, uh, uh, we, we, we so misinterpret what it means for God to be sovereign. We so misinterpret that that we believe that every act of evil in the world is, is done by God. In fact, if you have a sinkhole in your yard and it swallows up your house, when your insurance adjuster comes, he's going to write on the form, act of God. And in the church world today, we don't know the difference. I'm telling you, friends, I'm talking about conservative, Bible-believing, Bible-thumping, fundamentalist pastors they, they don't know the difference between God and the devil. And they, they, said, they told me, well, he may be the devil, but he's God's devil. You've heard me go off on that in other sermons. I'm not going to redo that whole thing. But, friends, can I tell you that's stupid? Let me just say that's just really, really, really stupid. And so Jesus has this woman who was bent double for 18 years and Jesus said, by the devil. The devil had done this to her. That this wasn't done by the sovereign, uh, God's sovereignty, or God's trying to teach her a lesson, or that she had some unconfessed sin in her life. I know that all of us have experienced that. I, I hear that fairly regularly. People, you have something bad happen in your life, and people say, well, God's trying to teach you a lesson. Or, you know, God gives you a high, hard one under the chin. He's going to put you in your place. Friends, I hope you don't think that way. Can I tell you that when Satan attacked Job, he didn't attack Job because Job was wicked. He attacked Job because Job was righteous. In fact, the, the Bible, the, not, it's not that the Bible says, God said Job was the most righteous man on earth when the devil attacked him. Do you, do you see that? So don't let anybody put a judgment on you. You're, you're sick. I don't care if it's caused by a bacteria, it's caused by a virus, it's caused by a birth defect, it's caused by uh, an injury, it's caused by free radicals, it's caused by some unknown cause, or it's caused by the devil. Don't let anybody put you on a head trip about those things, friends. That's just is not the way to, to, that God works in our lives. Please don't fall for that. Judging people who are wounded, judging people who are hurting, judging people who are sick, that is no way for a Christian to be. I... Uh, uh, let me let me introduce you to a word, a kerygma. It's an important word in theology, K-E-R-Y-G-M-A, kerygma. And it's from the Greek word caruso that means uh, to preach or to proclaim, to proclaim. And kerygma is the word they use 
for what the apostles preached. We know that the apostles preached. That's not the issue. It's what did they preach, the substance of their messages. And so you go back and you read through the book of Acts, and it says Peter preached, but do you know what he said when he preached? What was his theology? What was he trying to communicate? That, the substance of his message is called the kerygma, the apostolic proclamation, what the apostles proclaimed. And so you read in Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 3, you pick up, you know, the kerygma. You, Acts chapter 4, you start going through there. And, and then there is Acts chapter 10 where Peter goes to Joppa and he preaches the gospel to the first Gentiles, Cornelius. Remember that story? And he preaches to Cornelius and Cornelius gets saved. He gets baptized in the Holy Spirit. He speaks in tongues. Yes, that's what it says. When, and he did it in the middle of Peter's sermon. Peter never even got to his altar call. <laughs> he just, right in the middle of a sermon, Cornelius is converted. But what was Peter preaching? And verse 38 tells us, and, and I'll tell you what it says. I'm not going to summarize it for you. I'm going to quote it to you. Peter preached how Jesus Christ was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, and went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Can I tell you that God does not oppress people? God is not your oppressor. He is your Savior. Please hear what I'm telling you today, friend. Let's get some of that religion out of our mind. Let's, let's cast down that religiosity. Let's just free ourselves from the from the judgmentalism and the powerlessness, the fecklessness of, of the Pharisees. Friends, can I tell you that I've been in this very building and I've seen people come down to the front and we prayed for them and God would heal them. He would hit them with power. We would see people healed in this very room and some people would come down and they would just celebrate what God was doing and others would be... Uh, offended and they would walk out and they would get on the phone and say they're doing voodoo at the Methodist church. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of silly. I kind of feel kind of embarrassed that I would say that out loud. <laughs> but, uh, but it's so crazy. It's so crazy. I mean, I've been in this very building, friends, when I've seen people just get zapped by God and other people sitting next to them or not far from them with their arms folded in the front. Vance Habner, the great Baptist preacher, said in the old days, we stood amazed in his presence. In the current day, we sit amused in our churches. Friends, I think it's time we stand amazed again. Don't you? The power of God is real, friends. What, what we have is such a cynical, weak, uh, pathetic belief system that we just don't see. We just don't see God move like God wants to move. God is a God of justice and mercy. And there were times where God healed people, the Lord healed people, Jesus healed people, because out of mercy... And out of compassion, the Bible gives 12 reasons God heals in, in the Gospels. 12 reasons. But friends, in this case, the story that I just read to you, Jesus healed this woman not from mercy, but from justice. It is not right that this woman should suffer like this. Friends, I have people in my life, and you do too, who are really suffering. And you know what? Maybe some of my wounds are self-inflicted, and maybe I've done something to harm myself. You know, you, you, you go out into a bar, and you get drunk, and you wreck your car on the way home, you hit a light pole, and you wind up in the hospital. Maybe you did that. But friends, there are a lot of people who are suffering who are just innocent. They are just kind and good people. And, and the devil hates them for it. 
and they're not under attack by the devil because they're not good. They're under attack by the devil because they are good. And we need to quit judging them and start blessing them, start healing them, start loving on them. You remember the Lord's Prayer? You, you say that maybe on Sundays. I, I try to say it every day. I say it about three times on Sunday morning before I get to church. And uh, I used to never say it, then I sort of learned to say it. And I read a book on it, and, and then I met some people who say the Lord's Prayer. And, and it touched me how they're faithful with it. And I began to learn its power a little bit. And, and sometimes you just feel like you don't have a prayer. And when you feel like you don't have a prayer, you have one. You don't have to think about it. You, just, you can just say it. When you're hurting so bad, you cannot even verbalize a prayer. You can't put your thoughts together. When, you, when, you are, when you're hurting so bad, your heart is broken or you're just so sick and, and you're just so tired and you just are looking for... You, you can't, even, can't even articulate words. You can turn to Matthew chapter 6 and you can read the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. Let me draw your attention to, uh, to a portion of the Lord's Prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You remember that? Yeah, you, you've heard it said, you've said it, you've heard it sung. Lead us not in, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You know what the Greek says there? It doesn't say deliver us from evil. It says deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from the evil, not generic evil, not just uh, something that's just generically bad. Deliver us from Hurricane Katrina or deliver us from an earthquake or deliver us from some random act of evil uh, or, or harm or, or something bad. It's, it's, it's personal and it's not generically evil. But the Greek says, deliver us from the evil one. He's talking there about Satan. Is it not right that this woman who has been bound by Satan, Jesus said, this woman had been bound by Satan. This woman had done nothing wrong. This woman is innocent. And she's under attack relentlessly by the devil for 18 years. Jesus said it's a matter not just of compassion or mercy, but it's a matter of justice that this woman be healed. God didn't make her sick. The devil did. I wish more preachers could just figure that out. We would live in a world that would be less judgmental and more kind and more compassionate to people who are hurting and to people who are sick. Peter said in Acts 10, 38, how Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power and went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Friends, do you feel oppressed today? Maybe you, you, you tried, you were really sick. Uh, this is not psychosomatic. This woman couldn't stand up. This, this was not in her brain. Even if it were, it's still a miracle, but this is not psychosomatic. This woman wasn't a head case. She was sick. She had a disease, a condition, but it wasn't caused by her diet or her lack of exercise or an injury. This was caused by the devil. Friends, are you battling dark angels right now? Are you really uh, having trouble with your breakthrough? Friends, here's what I'm going to do for you today. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for your deliverance. And after I pray for your deliverance, I'm going to pray for your healing. Because sometimes we pray for healing and what the person really needs is deliverance. They're actually under a spiritual attack. It just manifested in a physical condition. And so uh, I want you to do three things this morning before I pray for you. One, I want you to acknowledge 
there's good and evil in the world, and God is good all the time, and the devil is bad all the time. That's number one. Number two, I want you to acknowledge that you could use some deliverance, <laughs> that you could use some freedom, that uh, maybe you're uh, really, really, really in the battle of your life, and you think that God has done this to you, but he hasn't. And, and your preacher or somebody has told you that this is, you just got to accept what the good Lord puts on you, but the good Lord didn't put this on you. The good Lord didn't make that woman walk around bent double for 18 years. Just get that out of your mind. And number three, I want you to say this. I want you to say this. Today is my day. <laughs> Today is my day. Now, I'm going to pray. We're going to go sing, and then we're going to come right back. When we come right back, I'm going to pray for you. And uh, when you receive your blessing, I want you to pass this sermon and this message and this service to a friend who needs to hear what we're teaching and preaching today. If you might say, well, my, my, uh, my friend is, uh, goes to this church and they don't believe it. They go to that church and don't believe it. They go to some dead church and they don't believe this. I understand. Listen, <laughs> I understand that. There are a lot of dead churches out there that preach a lot of dead religion. I'm not asking you to tell your friend, your loved one, to move to Florida and join our church. <laughs> they can go to church wherever they want to. I'm telling you that it doesn't matter where you go to church, God can deliver you. God can deliver you this morning. And we, we just believe that today is your day. All right? We're going for it today. <laughs> are you excited about it? I'm just so excited. God's going to do great things today. We're going to have some breakthroughs. We're going to have some testimonies. I cannot wait. Hey, praise man, y'all sing one more time. And while they're singing, you be worshiping with them. Because when we get back, I'm going to speak the word over your life. God's going to do great things today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise man, take it away.
Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I have a friend in uh, Kentucky, Tom Wilson, a pastor buddy, missionary buddy. And he told me one time, he said, if, if you did to your children what people say God does to his children, you'd be arrested for child abuse. You'd go to prison. You'd go to the electric chair. What do you think about that? I believe that's true. If you did to your kids what people say God does to his kids, you'd go to prison. Friends, we have a father that loves us, and he loves us a lot. And uh, if you ask your father for bread, he's not going to give you a rock. If you ask your father, your earthly father, for a fish, he's not going to give you a scorpion. How much more will the Heavenly Father give good gifts to His own children, including the Holy Spirit? And so here's what we're going to do, friends. I'm going to pray the devil off of you today. I'm going to bind him, and we're going to cast him off of you. And I want you to enter in. Don't sit passively. Uh, uh, I want you to receive. I want you to open up your heart and your mind and receive. And and. You're going to feel the Holy Spirit come into your living room or your bedroom or wherever you are. It's going to make a big difference in your life. And then I'm going to pray for God to release uh, his healing grace to you. So let's pray right now. Lord, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so excited about what you're going to do today, Lord. So Jesus' name, I pray for my brothers and my sisters who are watching this morning. And many of them, Lord, they don't have any frame of reference for healing because they were taught that, that, that healing was for 2,000 years ago and, and not for today. And so they don't really see, Lord, what's available to them. And so, Lord, that's not their fault. It's just the way church has developed over the years. And some are afraid of the Holy Spirit, and, and some are just afraid of uh, anointing with oil and all of that. Lord, they're just afraid. But I just speak peace right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, right now in Jesus' name, I pray the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over every man, woman, and boy and girl watching this video right now. I plead the blood of Jesus. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Our God sent his son and he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes, by his bloody stripes on his back, we are healed. And I plead, plead the blood of Jesus over everybody's body, over every person's spirit, over every person's mind. And I speak release in Jesus' name. Satan, you must go in Jesus' name. You have no hold. You have no place in this person, in these people, in the men and the women that are watching today. Satan, they are not yours. I rebuke you, devil, in Jesus' name. You take your hands off God's property. It is not right. For you to afflict God's property. Not for 18 years, not for 18 minutes are you to afflict, inflict, and afflict God's property. So just breathe deeply and just receive what the Lord has for you right now. Just receive it. Just receive your deliverance. We're just going to wait a minute. Just, Lord, just walk among, walk among your people, Lord, walk among your people. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I just pray right now in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, I think of the uh, Raphael, the, the angel with healing in his wings, and I just release that whole company of healing angels, Lord, to go out into the homes right now in Jesus' name. I, I I feel the brush of angels' wings right now. Lord, just touch my brothers and sisters, Lord. Let them feel your presence, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We just release the company of Raphael, angels with healing in their wings, Lord.
In Jesus' name. Just breathe in the Spirit. Just breathe it in and let the Lord minister to you right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I, I, somebody with uh, uh, chest. Uh, I don't know if it's COVID or pneumonia or some other condition that's afflicted your lungs and your uh, upper and lower respiratory system, but I pray right now. I see you. The Lord is touching you right now. Just breathe deep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't wait to get that testimony back. Hallelujah. 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 There is uh, even 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 right now where well, your eyes are closed, but from the, about the center of your nose up, you, there's a light. There's a light. You can feel it on your forehead and, and into your eyes and and uh, the light of God is shining on you. Your your eyes are closed, but there, but you, but there's a brightness. The brightness of His glory is moving in there, and you're starting. To, God's renewing your mind, and He's freeing your mind. He's freeing your mind right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, there's somebody with uh, a pain. I think it's in your knees. I see maybe your left knee, but either either knee, but I. I, I, uh, there's somebody I know with your left knee and there's others maybe with your right knee but, but the Lord is healing he's touching your knee I think it might be arthritis or a torn ligament or something I, I, but there's, there's a pain there and I think the Lord is touching you I, I, I feel I, he, he is touching you I don't think he's touching you he's touching you and, and I know that he's touching you and the Lord has shown me this and I just, I just celebrate right now there's somebody with a disc problem in your neck and the Lord is touching you and you're just sick of it. And, and it seems with so many people dying of COVID and so many people having all these other problems, you feel a little bit sheepish about it because you say, well, it's just pain in the neck and it's not life-threatening. But you know what? Uh, the Lord wants to heal your neck this morning. He wants to heal your neck and he's touching you and blessing you. He's just placing his fingers and and all up and down from uh, those, those vertebrae and uh, from the center of your back on up all the way to your skull. And God's just freeing you right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The folks with trouble swallowing, it's not tonsillitis. I think it has something to do with your esophagus or something in your throat, maybe a reaction to some medicine you took or the, some medicine that you take, but you're just having trouble swallowing. It's not uh, tonsillitis. It, 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 it's just, it's a sort of a, just kind of a thing you have had to deal with. And, and so I just pray right now that you, the Lord would just free you to, to swallow. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I pray for somebody with a deviated septum. In Jesus' name, I just release, I just release it right now and Jesus name there's a person with heart problems I think you have some blockages and there's there's an issue there and uh, and you may not even know it you just may you may maybe you think it's indigestion but there's been a little pain there and you've kind of had to watch it a little bit and the Lord is releasing uh, the Lord is cleaning out some arteries today and he is restoring some uh, you'll feel better you won't even know it's you, but <laughs> you'll feel better. You'll just, your heart will be more efficient, and you'll have more energy, and God is touching you right now in Jesus' name. I'm praying for people this morning with, uh, with some dementia, and uh, you're just having trouble remembering, and, uh, and, and it's just intermittent, and you don't know, you don't think it's Alzheimer's, you don't think it's something there's that chronic like Parkinson's or something like that, but but you're concerned about it, and maybe you just think, well, it's just age. But but the Lord is touching your brain right now in Jesus' name, and He's restoring those synopsis. He's restoring those uh, that electrical system that that operates your brain. I I don't know anything about brain chemistry, but the Lord is touching your head right now in Jesus' name. And you are coming back. I, I see arthritis and fingers that the Lord is healing. I'm praying over feet. I know I have trouble with my right foot, but I'm praying right now for ligament damage, for arthritis, and for just really just some foot trouble. And it just is so annoying. It's just such a, a crummy 
thing to have happen to you. So I just pray right now in Jesus' name for your feet. Now, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Lord, you just release healing into the homes of every single person uh, that's watching today, Lord. And as this video for this healing service gets, gets uh, shared here, there, and yonder, I just pray, Lord, that every person, if they're watching this on Sunday afternoon or they're watching this uh, not on the very day, not on this day in August, but, but they're watching it in September or October, or they're watching it in 2022, or they, they stumble across this, and this service is not even live to them or even remotely live to them, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that, that the anointing that's upon me and that's upon this ministry, Lord, will continue to bless, continue, Lord. Just, just increase, Lord, every time we share it with somebody, with a friend or a loved one. We know we risk a lot when we share these things, and, and people worry about it. But what will people think? They'll think you're a fanatic, or they'll think you're a holy roller. Friends, if the, last th if the worst thing you're ever called in life is a holy roller, you're blessed. So... <laughs> You be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Friends, I want you to connect with us. And here's the deal we make. We, uh, we send out a, a, a little letter. It just uh, Sometimes we enclose a gift, sometimes we don't. Just something to encourage you once a month. We have a little uh, letter we're going to send out about the Psalms. It's going to come out in about three weeks. I think in October we have a little surprise, and then in uh, in uh, for at Thanksgiving we're going to send out not a November letter, but we're actually going to send out a Christmas gift that we purchased for you, and we want you to get it, and it's important, and uh, we're going to invest a little bit, and then in January, there uh, so Thanksgiving will be a Christmas and a Thanksgiving gift combined, and we really want you to get it. And then we got a real special gift for you in uh, January, and you're just going to be blessed by it. But we need to know that you're watching. And I, we say this, friends, we don't ask for money. And, and uh, so please, you will never receive a letter asking you to send us cash. <laughs> we just, we don't do it. And uh, we know that people who watch this go to other churches, and so put your money there. That's fine. But, uh, but we do want to, uh, we want to bless you. Our church has been unusually blessed. And although we don't have a big crowd after post-COVID, uh, we still have a wonderful congregation. And we're very generous in this little church. And, uh, and so we want to bless you. So everybody in our church and in our online congregation, we send out little blessings to. And... Uh, and uh, so we want to do that for you. And uh, we got some things, some smaller things this fall. We're just sending just little reminders of how much God loves you. Inexpensive things, just letters, really, blessings to you. But we have significant things we want to send you that we want to put into your hand in, uh, so right around Thanksgiving, actually, for your Christmas present from, from us. And then we got something that's really important that's coming to you in December and January, two different two different gifts. And so it's just our it's just our honor. You know, sometimes we send out a letter. We put a pack of seeds in there one time. Do you remember that? And so we were teaching on the seeds, and so we sent you seeds. So it's not a big deal, but it's just a way of reminding you of how much that God loves you and we love you too. And uh, we want to connect with you. We love you. And uh, I think we have almost every address uh, that, that we know of, but I'm not sure. So you just put it, send it to us on Facebook or something, and we'll get you a blessing. We like to mail them to you the old-fashioned way. I mean, we could just send out emails, and that'd be fine. But we, I like to go to the post office and get something out of the post office. I like to open up something. That, that not a bill. <laughs> yeah. So I like to open up something good. So friends, we will see you soon. I hope to see you Saturday at Fun and Flora. If not, I'll see you right here. Same bat time, same bat channel. You remember that from your childhood? <laughs> yeah. 
next Sunday morning. I love you. I'll see you then. God bless you. Thank you.